Good day, everyone. Um, as you can see in the title of the video, I'm going to be going into detail about how I got my Lyme disease and pretty much how it affects my life today. And I guess just like the process of uh, how it's affected my life. Uh, before anything, I want to introduce myself. My name is Martin Maldonado. This is officially my very first YouTube video, so it's kind of cool. Um, so yeah, without any further ado, let's get into it. So I, in October of 2015, so to the, today's 2020, just uh, for reference. But in October of 2015, I, I moved into a place, um, I was living in Miami, Florida, and I was renting a room in, um, in that particular time, it was very, very rainy. And if, if you know anything about Florida, it gets, you know, it could get really, really rainy and muggy and stuff like that. And a lot of the time there's a lot of bugs. Um, but growing up in Florida, it's just part of life. So you, at least me, like I never really thought too much of it. So I noticed at that time that I, I kept on finding bugs in my room like uh, and it would happen mostly right after the rain so if you know and it was all types of bugs but small and big and small types of bugs and um, also at the time I was working at a restaurant so whenever I would get out of work you know a lot of the times I would I would be so exhausted that I I, I would come home and immediately just like fall out and like lay on my bed in my work clothes and uh, my work clothes and again, this came whenever I was like coming out of the rain because that particular month was very rainy. And the street that I was living on, there was a lot of bushes and trees and stuff. And so all of this is going to add to the actual, um, what ended up happening. You know, these are all context clues. So one day I woke up and I felt what I thought was like a it was probably like three in the morning or something and I was dead asleep and I woke up and I felt something that was pinching me and I thought that I was asleep, that I'd fallen asleep on maybe like a belt or something or I don't know, something was like poking me. And I wake up and I see like this, what I'm pretty sure was like a centipede, you know, the, the long things with like the, the legs. And so I freaked out. I think I got it and I threw it in the toilet, I flushed it down. And right after that, I just, I, I started noticing just so many more things and just more and more bugs and it was just freaking me out. And within a couple of weeks of that, I noticed that I, I had gotten, I woke up one day randomly and I had this big rash right here on this cheek. It looked like somebody just got like a like a powder puff of like a, like blush, and just you know just slap me on the face and and you know I get I get really flushed sometimes so I looked at it and I thought it's kind of strange but I didn't I I I don't know cognitive dissonance or something I I just wasn't really focused on it and I just went about my day. As I went about my day, I noticed that it wasn't going away, and I was just all like, okay, well, I have a rash on my face, a red rash on my face, strange, I don't know what this is. You know, before this, I had had amazing health all of my life, um, to the point where, like, I would get sick maybe, like, maybe once a year. So, like, sickness and anything like that, like, those things were just so foreign to me that when I see a big red mark on my face, it was nothing. Like, I, I really was just like, whatever. Like, I probably slept weird on my face. And so with all that being said, um, you know, a day goes by, two days go by, three days go by, four days go by, and I still have this thing on my face. So I go to my mother and uh, my mother has like um, rosacea. She has like, like rashy skin. She's very fair and she works in the sun. So, you know, she has to always like be mindful of that. And she has these like skin creams for it. And so I go to her and I show her, I'm like, mom, look at this thing that I have. And she's all like, yeah, it's kind of strange. Um, here, I have a cream for it. You could borrow it. So I take the cream and I go home. I put on the cream and I'm all like, cool, you know, it'll go away. It'll go away. I'll wake up tomorrow to be gone. 
I wake up the next day, it's not gone. Long story short, I probably had this rash on my face for about seven days. And in those seven days, you know, I, I realized that once I put on the topical cream, I realized that what I had on my face was not a topical problem. It was not a skin related problem. It was an internal problem that was uh, sort of being reflected out. So when I thought about that again, cause I'm a dummy, I'm just like, no, <laughs> I don't know. Like it wasn't really, um, again, you know, you're just young and dumb and you're just like, well, you know, whatever, like la di da. So after that, um, I want to say within a month, I remember getting really drunk one night, you know, just for reference, like I was partying a lot at this time, not, maybe not a whole lot, but you know, like, like I was, I was going out and I was going to bars and I was drinking and stuff. And so I come home one night and I'm, uh, you know, for lack of a better term, pretty shit faced. And so I pass out and I wake up and I have just like, for whatever reason, just like this overwhelming feeling of like biting, biting sensation all over my body. And, and mind you, I'm like stunk drunk and it's the middle of the night and I'm just like, uh, you know, like what the fuck? Like I, I didn't know what it was. So it was, it was, it was weird. So I ended up going to bed that night. I mean, I ended up falling back asleep. And the next day I woke up and I was just all like, God, like that was so weird. You know, what were these, these bugs that were, or the, the, the sensation of biting, you know? And, and I sort of just, um, I sort of just thought like, you know, like I've been having, I've been finding little bugs all throughout my place. So I'm just all like, maybe they got on me when I was asleep and you know, that, that's the best I could come up with. So mind you, all of this happened in October of 2015. So October 15, 2015. So I want to say by December of 2015, out of nowhere, I started every time that I would go to sleep, um, I started to feel sensations of biting every day. And mind you, this is after I had already cleaned out my place. I got rid of all the bugs. By this time, it was winter time in Miami, which is, um, for you know, for us, it's dry. And so I'm, I'm, I'm perplexed. I'm just all like, you know, why, do I, why am I feeling biting sensation? And it had, it was happening. It started out, you know, you know, kind of subtle, and then it, it gradually became just more and more intense, to the point that. I could not sleep. I would I would hit the bed and you know within an hour or something, you know, and, and and it's always right when I'm about to go to sleep. I would just feel these these pricks and like this it it really just felt like bugs on my body just stinging me and biting me. And so I was freaking out. I didn't know what to do. Um you know, my my boyfriend at the time, he was there and and I was sort of trying to confide in him like, you know, just figure something out and figure out an answer. So the problem escalated quickly to the point where I had to call off of work for weeks uh, because I just could not sleep at night. And then not only that, it became, it, beca it got to a point that throughout the day, I was, I was feeling biting throughout the day. And so it, 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 it drove me insane because it drove me insane, you know, mostly because of, of the biting sensation. But then when you put that in, in combination with the fact that you're not sleeping, you know, lack of sleep physically drives us insane. So at one point I was sleeping, I think like two hours a night max. And this went on for weeks and I was incoherent. I was hearing voices. I constantly was feeling just biting and tingling and crawling and it literally felt like just like your worst nightmare. It felt like a fucking horror film. It was so terrifying. And you know, I, I broke down and I was crying and I was I was I was just so beside myself and you know, thank God for my partner at the time because he really took he really took it upon himself to find a solution 
and he knew that you know I wasn't well enough to really um, I guess go about these things on my own and and sort of uh, just find find the answers on my own so because he knew that I was so sick and that I, I was so just out of it so he took it upon himself to go to the internet and to just you know furiously just look for things and, and for whatever and he, he typed in all types of things and so while he was doing that I was out of work I was I was just in this weird like haze of just just terror and constant not knowing what it was and still like you know you feeling biting and this and that so at that time I decided to go to the doctor um, mind you I did not have insurance you know gotta love America and so I go to the doctor, I go to, I go to a hospital, I go to a, a, an emergency room. I go to an emergency room and I try to explain to the doctor what, what is going on with me. And he's all like, what's going on with you? And I'm like, I'm feeling these, these, these feelings of biting and tingling and all this shit. And he's just all like, well, I don't see anything on you. He's like, do you have bugs in your room? Just all like, yes, I'm like, but I got rid of the bugs. And you know, when you're trying to explain something to someone, it's very easy for them to sort of like dismiss you, yes, but also just sort of look at you like, wow, like you need to, t you, need to you need to rest, you know, like you're kind of like off your, off your rocker. So I ended up telling the physician, I was like, yeah, like I think what I have is some sort of scabies or something. I, 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 I knew that it was some sort of bug that was infested in my skin. I could not find on the internet or just any sort of resource, I could not find anything that really gave me the answer that I was looking for because nothing really solidified my 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 suspicions or just anything. It was it was just strange all around. So that happened, and the doctor pretty much, you know, just as dumbfounded as me, he just pretty much he's like, all right, well you got scabies, you know, according to you, you have scabies. He's all like. Um, so I'll give you some permethrin, uh, permethrin cream. So that's so for anyone who doesn't know, like permethrin is pretty much like the the go-to uh, cream for scabies and for I guess uh, skin-related parasites and things like that. So he gave me a cream of permethrin. I went home elated. You know, I was just like, thank God I have something right now. So I went home and I put on the cream. And you know, like I'm, and, and again, everything, everything was tested at at night because the biting and the bugs and everything, all of it, it all came out at night. You know what I mean? Once the sun goes down, it was just, it was on. So you know, although I was feeling little things, tingles, pricks here and there throughout the day, only at nighttime when I'm in the bed would I feel like just overwhelming, you know, biting, and and to the point where it just drives you mad. And so I just. I poured the whole permethrin cream on my on my skin, everything all over my body, and I go to sleep that night. And much to my, I guess much to my surprise, but at the same time I was just happy either way. But it worked. That night I slept. I slept for the first time in probably three weeks, more than a you know a handful of hours, and I slept the whole night. It was the most amazing feeling. And so I woke up the next day and I was like, you know, hooray, like I'm, I'm cured. And, you know, I told my boyfriend, I was like, yeah, you know, it was, I guess it was just uh, rape or scabies. And I was like, you know, whatever, uh, uh, we got it under control. And he's like, cool. So I put the cream, whatever, did the thing the next day. I was super happy and I was like, you know what? All right, I got this under control. You know, I was just doing more just to clean my place and just to, to, to I guess just to like take out anything that I, that I thought that could potentially sort of uh, give me another infection or, or, you know, just stuff like that. So the next day comes around the nighttime and it's time for me to go to sleep again. I put on the cream and again, I'm just like, all right, you know, whatever things, everything's fine. I go to sleep and within minutes, I'm being bit again. And I just became petrified. The entire night I was being bit. 
I did not I did not get a wink of sleep that night again and so at that time I'm just I'm without words I'm just I'm so just destitute and just afraid and, and I don't know what to do and the permethrin cream stopped working and I used it again for I want to say another like four or five days every single day and it just stopped working and I didn't know what was happening so I ended up having to leave my place and I went to go stay with my cousin uh, I just told him I was like you know what I'm gonna stay with you for a few weeks I'm like, we'll just see how it goes. You know, I'll, I'll just stay with you for a few weeks and this and that. And my, meanwhile, my boyfriend, he resumed his, his search and his inquiry into what this could be or, you know, um, just looking up all of my symptoms. Anyways, so he finally finds, I guess, like a, a forum. And it was people talking about... Um, The first word that came up was Morgellons. And so Morgellons, for people who don't know, is everything I just described, everything. Morgellons is a parasite that sort of finds its way into your body and it manifests somehow onto the skin. Um, you'll, sometimes you'll get lesions, but it's, it's this overwhelming, itchy, scratchy, sort of really gross feeling. And I was just, uh, I was happy that he found some sort of answer, but it, it was it was at a time when it was just so insanely intense and just it was happening now more and more and it was happening really all day now and I was just super stressed out and mind you this was coming at a time you know so you know fast forward this is already January of 2016 and my partner and I this is a month before we plan on moving to New York City. We had planned on moving to New York City for six months prior. And we were saving and doing all of these things to, to make that move possible. And only within the last two months did this happen. So you could imagine the amount of stress and just the amount of pressure and, and everything that goes along with that. With a, Moving is stressful in and of itself. But it's just like you have this intense, Thing that's ravaging your body and you really have no answer for it and I felt powerless and I felt just so scared because I'm just like God like I need to I'm about to move to New York City and I need to be on my P's and Q's in every which way possible and my biggest fear was that this was going to delay the move or just or or or, or stop it altogether to where we wouldn't we couldn't be able to so I grew just I just I just sunk I just sunk and so my partner ended up speaking, I think, personally with somebody online and they offered up a, a resolution. And it was, it was sort of like a, a concoction, if you will, of certain things to take to sort of alleviate and to, I guess get rid of it. Because they said that the Morgellons was this sort of like fungi type of infection that it gets in your body and it just sort of spreads and does all this really gross stuff and so we did that and i followed it to the t and within two weeks i was you know i showed a, a, a remarkable improvement and with in a month of that literally you know up until the day that we got on the plane to go to new york city up until that day like every day it was just you know it was inching better and better and better and better and better and then i f and then and in, in the process i lost like 20 pounds because they said that you had to go on this super strict diet you know nothing processed nothing no rice no bread no sugar and and it's so bizarre because i didn't realize how much you know rice and bread and sugar i was consuming at the time and so I, I eliminated those things from my diet and I, you know, I went pretty much vegan and that and water and that mixed with the protocol that they gave me, which was a, a fairly simple protocol, you know, uh, vinegars and um, I forget the, the, the particular like root, but it was like, you know, just like these, you know, simple, simple little, little herbs and, and vinegars and that and mixed with the vegan. And by the time I got to New York, I was normal.
and I and, and don't get, don't get me wrong, the biting was still happening, but it was you know, it was it was taken down you know exponentially. It was taken down to like a fraction of what it was. So that's the whole thing with Morgellons, uh, and I'm gonna tie all of these things together at the end of the video. Moving along. So all of 2016, I was more or less maintaining the Morgellons um, infection. Uh, you know, I was working and I was, but you know, I was living my life. I was living my life. I was working. I, I had friends. I was, I was, you know, I was in love and, and everything was peachy keen. So 2016 passes, then 2017 comes. And by 2017, the Morgellons and that whole thing had pretty much... Um, it hadn't gone away 100%, but I would say 95% by 2017. And then by 2018, it was happening once every three months or so. So, all of that, great. So in that entire time, I would, I was reading heavily on Morgellons because, you know, just like with anyone, like you want to know what's happening inside of your body. And, and I was reading different, um, different articles about how Morgellons is related to Lyme disease. And I kept seeing the word Lyme and I didn't really realize what that was, but I'm just like, all right, again, like, I'm just all like, okay, well, it's related, but you know, I would read the, the, I would read the symptoms of Lyme disease. And although I probably had a few, it wasn't anything close to that. Like I would see just these horrific videos of people who had Lyme disease. And I was just like, wow, like, thank God that's not me. You know, I just had this, you know, which is probably related, but you know, whatever I got, I got the, the, the better end of the stick, you know? Um, so 2018 rolls around and Everything is peachy keen, like I said. And then I noticed that in that year, by the summertime, I was having problems um, breathing sometimes. I was having problems, just uh, breathing problems. My heart, I feel, would, would sometimes it would, it would be um, too fast and sometimes it would be extra slow to the point where like I would be asleep and then I would have to, I would be like, waking up by like the fact that like my heart it stopped beating or at least that's how it felt you know it was like <gasps> you know it felt like my heart stopped beating and then other days i would just be i don't know at work or standing around or you know doing nothing in particular and just my heart would just start racing and the whole thing was just so bizarre and i didn't really i didn't really know what, what to what to make of it you know and, I, and at that time you know i had i had insurance and i was going to doctors and you know, it's one of those things where like the whole time that it's happening, you're like, okay, it's happening. And then you get to the doctor and you're fine. The doctors run tests, you're fine. I'm just like, all right. Um, it's probably because I'm smoking cigarettes. So I cut the cigarettes and, and I'm gonna say that the cutting cigarettes, it, it did, there was an improvement. There was a improvement. And so whatever, so that, that sort of went about. And so, now we're in the fall of 2018. So the fall of 2018 rolls around and there were a lot of things that were going on. Um, personally, I was having a lot of issues, um, family issues and you know, my relationship, we had, we had hit in a, a rough patch. And you know, there were just a lot of emotions that were going on at that time, a lot of negativity and there was a lot of arguing and I guess you could just say that it was a very very stressful time it was very very stressful and I think that I internalized that stress to a large degree and so what ended up happening was I began drinking a lot more uh, I began drinking a lot more just to sort of self-medicate and just to, I guess, just deal with what I was dealing with. And so in the process, I ended up getting an ulcer in my stomach uh, just from all of the stress and from all of the binge drinking and just all of the, the things that, that was putting into my body that was harming me. And I think it was through that that whatever latent thing that was lying in me uh, the Lyme disease, the, the parasite, whatever it was, my immune system was holding it down. 
And I think whenever I got the ulcer, it sort of opened up, I guess, like the gateways for it to just swoop in and just do what it did. And so this is now fall of 2018. At this time, I was noticing subtle but consistent symptoms. I was having insomnia like no other. And I mean, I've always dealt with insomnia for the most for most of my adult life, but this was just it was it was insane. I wasn't sleeping more than like 3 hours a day or a night. And um sleeping all day and then just erratic um my behavior, my moods, like I was just it was just up and down side to side and just everything in between and I didn't know what was going on. I, I just thought I was stressed out. I thought I, I really just thought I was stressed out from from what I was going through with in, in my relationship and just you know living together. And I, I just thought I was really miserable and that every, everything was just sort of manifesting out. So, with all that being said, as the months progressed, so did my symptoms. My heartbeat, like I said earlier, the heart stuff was happening more and more intensely. And I ended up having to basically come down to Florida. I was like, I'm gonna have to go to Florida and I'm gonna have to just, you know what, I'm gonna stay with my cousin. <laughs> you know, when in doubt, I'll go and I'll stay with my cousin. Um, so I, I went to Florida and I stayed with my cousin. And the thing that I noticed immediately when I got down there was just the fact that I, I was so paranoid and I had this like this this strange overwhelming feeling of just um, anxiety I was having so much anxiety around everything especially like uh, things like socializing he's like oh like you know let's go to so-and-so's house so-and-so is throwing a party oh like uh, let's go to the mall or something and I would just be like no yeah, no 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 like I was just so frightened of being around people and I, I just I felt this just this this really strange and bizarre feeling of just unease around everyone and, and any, any situation that I deem to just be too stressful. And so I was there for a few days. I went back to New York. I was in New York and everything, you know, was cool. Mind you, this is December of 2019 now. And at this point, you know, like, um, my partner and I, we were, you know, we were already on our way out. We were, we were already, um, sort of talking logistics of how we were going to, to change, either change our relationship or break up. And, and it, it, it was what it was, but you know, it was very stressful for me either way. So January, no, no, hold on. So I ended up going, coming back to, to Miami uh, because that was gonna be Christmas and New Year's. And I don't know what happened, but within that time, everything was fine. I, I went back to Miami, we partied, we had fun. I went and I saw friends, I saw family. Everything was, was the way it should be and everything was great. Mind you, this was right after I had all of my sort of episodes and I just really, I just really attributed to just not sleeping and being stressed out. At this time, I was drinking a lot. I was drinking a lot partying so where where before i had sort of like taken a break because of you know the little ulcer in my stomach here i resumed drinking bad idea and so my stomach got fucked up for like pretty much all of january once i returned to new york so in january of 2020 i was on top of the world i returned to new york city with a gusto for life i, I was you know, 2020 was going to be my year. 2020 was gonna be my year. And it was to the point where I was, I was looking up like self-help books and I was looking up different things that I could consume mentally that would feed my soul, that would sort of negate the negativity that I had sort of found myself in and, and just sort of find my emotional and spiritual equal equilibrium once more. And the most strange thing was that the more and more that I would look up these sort of like, you know, self-help books and things that made me feel better and 
and you know the secret and like you know oprah and all this good stuff the more and more that i would i would consume this information and this this content the more and more ill that i was becoming and it's like that thing where you lie to yourself or you just you downplay something so much because you want to believe something else over it so much more and it can become quite heartbreaking and so with all of that being said hold on let me get this light so with all of that being said fast forward to March March of 2020 I ended up getting a shot in my arm uh, it was a, a what do you call it a, a vaccine I ended up getting a vaccine for hepatitis at the suggestion of my doctor you know she's like do you want a hepatitis vaccine I'm like no usually I say no usually like you know I, I don't like to stay at the doctors longer than than I should um, but uh, that particular day I was just like you know what I don't want hepatitis why the fuck not so I get the hepatitis vaccine and it was the weirdest thing within days I I was my symptoms they just blew up they everything just came sort of crashing down and week after week after week I was just deteriorating to the point where late April came and I could not get out of bed I could not get out of bed I could not see my vision was just completely fucked and I couldn't do anything and at this point my relationship between my partner and I had been it was just kaput it was done and we were already talking about where we were gonna go how we were gonna split up this that and the third and this could not have happened at a worse time and and so I'm there basically like bawling you know just crying every day because you know i i couldn't go to work i couldn't do anything i had to i had to stop working and he was really the only person there at the time and the thing about it is that when you're living with someone and you two have already emotionally detached from some from one another there is no it's very very difficult to be able to pour yourself into someone emotionally whenever you're you're experiencing something that's just so insanely painful on so many levels and he was just not able to to be there he was not able to be fully present with me because of everything that had happened and he was just you know unfortunately he was burdened with having to care for me when we were already on our way out and May of 2020 was when everything just broke. I was stuck in bed, I could not see, I could not move, I could barely talk, I was slurring my speech. He would come home from work every day and just see me in bed and he didn't know what to make of it. Partly he thought that I was just, um, I don't know, maybe making it up but maybe just more like exaggerating it for whatever reason and it was just it was just really really just it was so fucked up because I was so in pain and I was so sick and 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 I needed someone I just needed someone to coddle me I guess as as infantilizing as that sounds I just needed someone to be there to hold my hand and to tell me everything was going to be okay and he really was put in a position where he's just all like you know damn like what am I going to do? What are you going to do? What are we going to do? You know? And so he took it upon himself once again to financially support me in that time, to figure something out. We went, I went to doctors, doctors, and I went to my regular doctor and she just told me, she's like, I don't know. She's like, your, your symptoms are way too varied. I couldn't tell you. I don't know. She's all like, I can refer you, so I'll refer you to so-and-so. I ended up going to a neurologist, the very first neurologist that I saw. He literally took two, he looked at me for two seconds. 
that's it. He looked at me for two seconds and he said, you're not sick. He's all like, you're a young guy. You know, you're not taking care of yourself. You're not doing what you gotta do. He's all like, you know, I think you just need to rest. I think you need to rest. I think you're, I think you're burning yourself at, bur uh, at both sides of the, of the candle. And he was just so patronizing to me. And mind you, when I was in his office, I was barely able to talk. And it was just one of the most like dehumanizing, minimizing feelings and just experiences I've ever had. It was awful. He ordered some, he ordered for me to go and have some tests and I went and I got an MRI. I got my first MRI because, you know, I, I, what I was experiencing was neurological. I went, I got my MRI and it was negative or nothing came back. No abnormalities came back and I was furious. And just to backtrack a little bit before I even went to the first neurologist, I went, I ended up going to the emergency room. And so I went to the emergency room and it was the same thing. They took my blood. I was there for hours. They took my blood and everything came back negative. I was just like, and I, and I remember telling the nurse, I'm like, look at me. And then she, I'm like, I'm, and she's like, nothing's wrong. Well, she didn't say nothing is wrong with you. She was just like, there is nothing that we see in the blood work. And she's like, so whatever it is, you know, we don't know. You have to, you have to keep looking. So after I got my first MRI back and it came back uh, negative, no, there was no abnormalities. I was just, I didn't know. I did not know. I did not know. It was so stressful. It was so painful because I was just, just by, I was in many ways I was by myself. I was, I was still, you know, my, my partner was there supporting me and doing what he could to keep me afloat. And I'll give him that. But there was nothing that I was able to, to do. I couldn't do anything. You know, I could barely walk. And so whenever you have these tests that are coming back negative, you're, you're so discouraged and, and there's nothing that you can do. So after that first MRI came back and it was negative, I didn't even want to go back to see that same neurologist because he just would have been like, see, I told you so when I knew he was wrong. And this is the main thing that I tell people. This is the main thing that I told my ex. This is the main thing that I always tell everyone at the time when I was, when I would tell different friends or, or family, whoever, and they, they were like, you know, maybe, maybe it's in your head. Maybe you're just exhausted. Maybe you're just stressed out you know your body you know your body you know what's strange you know what's and and the thing is that as people we have a great ability to sort of cast things aside you know like mm, my knee's not kind of it feels kind of weird today so you know um whatever the it must be just because I, I sat on something wrong or whatever you know but but you know your body and you know when there is a fundamental difference and so so june happened and i i decided to go back vegan again and you know because no matter what no matter what your diet is imperative if your diet is not good on the lyme disease whatever disease you know what i mean and, and even in general if your diet is not on point, you will suffer. So I went back to being vegan again and slowly but surely, you know, like with certain, certain things I was doing, you know, I was, I was feeling, I was able to walk and I was able to get out of bed and I was able to form sentences again. I was still slurring my speech, but I was, I was able to sort of feign a, a normal human being. And within that process, I was doing so much research. I mean, I was just laying in bed all day. So I'm in bed all day. I'm going through just, just piles of articles and books and YouTube videos and this and that. And I was just, I was just pounding my fucking symptoms into like Google search. Like, what is this that I have? 
And the, the main thing that I kept on coming up with that, that, I, could, that I could really wrap my mind around was um, MS, so multiple sclerosis. Multiple sclerosis, if you don't know, is um, it, it, it pretty it, it's it stands for multiple scars, but it's sort of scarring of the brain and it, it's a neurological impairment. People aren't really sure what causes it, but uh, there there is they suspect there is a a connection between MS and Lyme disease. There's there's, there's like some sort of weird bacterial correlation that even scientists and, and doctors aren't really sure of. So. What I felt what I had or what that was most similar was MS. So since the first MRI came back negative, I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna do another MRI or I'm gonna see another neurologist and I'm gonna do another person. So within that span, I saw more neurologists, I saw a rheumatologist, I saw, I couldn't even tell you. I probably saw about seven doctors in that time. And so all of that stuff is happening and everything just comes back as just no, or you're fine. Nothing is wrong. We don't know. Negativo. And I'm just all like, fuck, like what the fuck is going on? And this is the thing. When so many people keep telling you the same thing and you have no explanation yourself, a part of you starts to believe them. So when you hear someone that's like, you know, maybe it's in your head, maybe it's in your head, and you're just like, am I making this up? And it's just, it's just like a mind fuck, like, because it just, it never stops, just rolling, 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 rolling. And July comes, and my partner and I were about to separate. Um, I'm moving, he's moving. We're living in Brooklyn. So he decides to move back to Miami and I decided to stay in New York. Um, I decided to stay in New York and just sort of tough it out on my own. I still had my jobs and I was feeling a little bit better. So I was doing, I was still working, but it was, it was at, a, at a different pace. And before he left, he told me, he said, what if this is Lyme disease? And I said, this can't be Lyme disease. He's like, why not? And I'm all like, because it, cause what, I, what I had was more Gellens and you can't get Lyme disease. Like, I guess like my logic was that since I already had like one strain of it, like there's no way that I, that I could get another, like a reinfection because I would have gotten it already. You know what I mean? It had been years. By that point, it had been four years. Yeah, it had been four years. So I was like, there's no way, there's no way. And so he was just all like, okay. He's all like, whatever. I ended up going to an ophthalmologist and because the ophthalmologist was, uh, he went to come, he, he, he went to check out my eyes because I, like, I was having really bad blurred vision. And mind you, I've always needed glasses, but I've never worn them. I've never been a glasses person, nor a contacts person, contact person, contacts. Um, and even though I needed them, I guess medically, I've been, I've been able to live my entire life without them. I've been able to work, I've been able to drive, I've been able to, to do everything without them, you know what I mean? And only whenever the, the infection, the onset of the infection came, was my eyesight just completely just obliterated. And so I ended up going to this ophthalmologist and the ophthalmologist, he's looking at my eyes. He's just like, my God, he's like, how have you been able to live your life like this? And I'm like, what do you mean? And he's just like, you're like really close to being blind. And I'm just like, and again, you, you think back on your life, I'm just all like, I've never been blind. Like my vision hasn't been the best. If I'm at a party and someone is just all like, hey, and they're like 40, 50 feet away, you know, in the dark, I'm gonna be like, eh, I don't know who that is. But I've been able to live a relatively normal, stable life with my vision. And I told him what happened. I told him about all of the things that had been occurring. 
And it's so interesting that out of a rheumatologist, a neurologist, a fucking ERologist, a cardiologist, whatever other ologist I saw, the eye doctor told me, he said, do you, have you ever heard of Lyme disease? And I'm just like, yeah. And he's just like, well, you might want to look into that because you have a lot of similar symptoms. And he even wrote a little note. And I'm just all like, okay. So this all was all in July of 2019. Mind you, in July of 2019, July and August, I started to feel a lot better. I was feeling better. I was, I was honestly feeling great at the time. I had been, you know, stuck to my vegan diet. I've been working out and everything, I was sleeping better and everything just sort of, um, I don't know, things just started to feel better in a weird way. But then every time I would sort of think like, oh, it's gone, I would wake up one day and like, I just couldn't move and like my, my, my eyes, my, my vision and just, um, you know, the, the palpitations and the heart stuff. And so this is the summer of 2019. I figure, you know what, let me go and let me get tested for Lyme. I go to a infectious disease doctor and he was pretty fucking clueless about it. He knew what it was, obviously he'd heard of it, but he wasn't really familiar with it. And he, he's like, you know, what? we'll do a test on you. Mind you, at this point, I had done about three weeks of just pure studying into Lyme disease and I'm just like, okay, okay, this is gonna be it, you know what I mean? I'm gonna know, you know. And then I also read that the Lyme disease itself, the tests are faulty. That, um, I don't know the exact percentage, but I think it's something like, you have like a 60, 40% or something like that of it being correct. So there's a lot of false negatives, a lot. So I get my Lyme disease test done and it comes back negative. I could have killed him. I could have, I could have like burned that whole place up like in flames. I was so pissed off. And he was just, and, I, and then I told him, I was like, you know that there is a chance that that is a false negative. And he's all like, no, that's not true. That's not true. So like the testing is pretty solid. And when, whenever a doctor is, they sort of negate what you say so quickly like that. Uh, me personally, I'm not gonna engage in an, in an argument with you. I'm not gonna sit there and like tell you like, actually, no, it is, uh, no, no, whatever. You got your mind made up. I'm, I have to uh, explore my options. The only other option was to go to a Lyme specialist. Now, if you know about Lyme specialists, they are expensive. Insurance does not cover them. Testing is incredibly expensive. The whole thing is, it could run you thousands of dollars. So I did not have that money on me. So from August to December or November, I was just sort of in limbo. I was in limbo. I was dealing with my health one day at a time. I had good days, I had bad days. You know, I was just sort of all over the place and everything was just, everything was just, it, it was just a nightmare, honestly. It was, it was a nightmare. I had some good days, but it was just a lot. So eventually I was able to, I guess, save the monies that I needed in order to go to a specialist. And I ended up going to a specialist out in Jersey. Um, really cool guy, really, um, you know, reputable guy. He's, he's been doing this thing for 30 years. So I felt really safe with him. And I ended up telling him my entire story that I just told y'all. Well, I don't think it was as long, <laughs> but, um, I ended up doing all of that and it was the first time that I had any sort of, any sort of vindication, any sort of like, you know what, you're not crazy. I get people like you all the time. You know, like that was the first person who didn't look at me and just sort of think like, oh, like you're a young guy, you're in shape. You're like, it was the first time and I was really, 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 just elated and I was like, okay, so what's the next step? He's all like, we're gonna, we're gonna get you tested. We're gonna test, you know, we're gonna test you for a hundred different things. They did like, like an extensive panel. And so 
They did all of that, and in December, I finally got back my Lyme test. And right, I finally got back my Lyme test, and it, and it came back positive for Babesia, um, Babesia, Babesia, Ehrlichia, and Bartonella. And the doctor said that the Lyme was, there was no positive for Lyme itself. So he said that there was a good possibility that the Lyme was actually, that it was a false negative. There's a possibility that a particular strain of Lyme that I got in Miami, that they just don't have that testing for that Lyme because it has not yet been um, discovered. Um, so he said that it's very rare to get um, the co-infections without Lyme. So he says, you should just assume you have Lyme. He's like, but either way, you have a positive test. So that's the part where you feel amazing, right? That's the part where you feel, you're just like, yes, God, yes. Like I finally, like I made it, I'm here. And then, you know, you have to start for your, you, you have to wait for the next step. So I'm like, what's the next step? He's like, well, the next step, we're gonna put you on antibiotics and we're gonna um, get you started on this, on this antibiotic protocol. And so, yeah, so, I'm going to be discussing all of that in my very next video. Um, if you stuck to the very end of this, bless your little heart. You're amazing. I like you. Uh, <laughs> um, and yeah, so thanks for listening to me and uh, I'll see you soon.